A very powerful feature in Sibelius is one called versions. And what it lets you do is to keep a track of the development of your score from the day you started it to the day you finish it. So you can see what you did, when you did it, what your thoughts were at those points, anything that you want to include um, in the, the information, you're free to do so. It also lets you do various other things. Let me show you what I mean. I'm looking here at a wee 12 bar blues piece that I've, I've put together. I'm going to put it into panorama mode just because it makes life easier to see what I'm doing. I tend to work in panorama mode anyway. So there's my 12 bar blues. Now, I'm going to quickly create a new instrument. I'm going to have a flute. I'll put that up there. And I'm going to quickly create some flute notes up there. I think I'll have a D, but I'll put it up an octave. This is just for demonstration so you can see what I'm doing. And that, I'll go up to an E, that'll be an E, and go back to a D, and back to a D there. So there's my flute part. You can listen to that. or not. Anyway, what I want to do now is to go to the view tab. What I could, I suppose, do is first of all is go to File, Save As, and then save it as Versions Added Flute. But I can go to the Review tab instead and do a new version. This here is my Versions area. So I can do a new version. But ask me what I want to call this, and I'm going to call this Flute. And I can put a comment in there. Like so. And I can click OK. And that's all it takes. I haven't I still have my score open. I can then carry on adding whatever I want to it, more instruments. I can change the structure, I can add dynamics, I can do what I like with it at this point. But what have I actually just done? Well, I've created a new version of it in the same file. This is the, the, the piece is called Versions Demo. If I go to the Edit Versions button, you can see all the versions that I've created. There's where I added the piano. There's where I added the melody. And you can see the comments that I put at that point. There's where I added, oh, uh, ending is where I changed the ending. So there's page two. I added a first time bar and a second time bar. You can see it there. I added a repeat and a first and second time ending. I added some strings at this point. Took out the melody and passed two and sorted some EQ issues in the mixer. And there's one I've just added. And I've added the flute. So you can see there that these are all a development of the score from when I started it to the current version, which is as it stands right now. But these are all part of the same file. They're not separate Sibelius files. Which means that if I go back to here, I can compare the two of them with each other. So let's go for, I want to compare the flute version with the strings version. And that then opens up both scores and tells me what I did between the two of them. I added one instrument, in this case, the flute. So there's the flute one, there's the one before that without the flute. It just opens them up in separate windows so you can see what the differences were. Let's try comparing different ones. Let's try a version this one with this one. There you go, between those two versions I added two instruments and I added text to one bar. That one bar incidentally was this text here and it's highlighted to show me what it was. One thing to notice is the background paper that it's written on. This one is on normal paper as you would as you would call it. This one here, the paper looks crumpled. That's because this isn't the current version. So I've discarded that. I've moved on to this one. This is the, the newest version of the score. When I'm happy with any of these, I can just close that down, 
we maximise this, and I'm back to where I was. So I can compare the differences between the two. I can also use the previous and next differences, so I can see what the changes were between my PCs. I also have the option of exporting a log of those changes. Now this could be handy as a teacher, for example, if you want to, um, if you're coming up to a parents' evening and you want to show the parents exactly what a particular person has done over the course of the week, the year, the term, whatever, you can do this and it'll create an RTF file which you can open in a Word document and away you go from there. You can decide what you want to put in there as well. Quite a powerful wee feature that. Of course, as a teacher, another way you could use it would be to use the comments along with the scores. Let's say, for example, a pupil puts um, a copy of the score on the shared area somewhere in the, in the school network, and you open the, that version and you look at it and you think, I want to make some suggestions. Well, you could do a comment. Um, For example, try making a better melody, because that one's a bit rubbish. And that goes there. And then you can then save the version. There's a new version, and you can call this added comment. So then whenever the pupil opens it up, they will see the comment, hopefully make some changes because of that. Once they're happy with it, they can then delete the comment, and they can create a new version of that as well. So you're always using it as a development process, as a development of the score, either as a, an individual, so you can keep a track of what you've done, or as a teacher, so you can keep a track of what the pupils have done. If we go back to the edit versions, just for a second, you've now seen there's my added comment. One thing that I could do, instead of using the comments, which are like sticky um, post-it notes, what I could do, let's say for example, if we get to the strings one here, you see down here in the comments area, there's an add and an edit button. So I can click add, I can add a new comment. Um, I like the strings, but try them on a guitar instead, for example. Click OK. And that comment then gets added, and you can see there are two comments now at this point. So there's a comment that the person that the pupil added when they were creating the score, and there's the comment that I've added, of course. Now, at the moment, it's, it still says MME1, which is the username for this machine. Obviously, different usernames would appear depending on the username logged in there. You may have seen as well that sometimes whenever you close a score down, Sibelius will automatically ask you if you want to save the current version of the score. What it's asking you is, you've made quite a lot of changes to the score, do you want to create a new version of it? So if you want to avoid that from happening, I would get into the habit of clicking the new version button once you've made any major changes to your score, and that way you're always going to keep a, an up-to-date version of it handy. So that's versions. It's a very powerful feature, and particularly from a teacher's point of view, it's one that you want to become very aware of, because it means that you can keep a very close track of the development of your pupils' music as they work their way through the term, through the course.